All right, what's up, boys and girls? Got a part 11 here today. Um, got some good news also. Uh, the channel got approved for monetization today. Uh, so that's a good thing. Um, I'm not going to place ads on the videos. I'm, you know, I'm just not. If you do see ads on these videos going forward, please let me know in the comments. You know, know that YouTube placed them there, but I'm not going to place ads on the video. Fuck that. Um, I will do channel memberships whenever I get the option to. I don't have that option yet. So I'll do two different levels. Um, and you'll see them when they get there. I'll talk about them when they get there. Uh, channel memberships. And I'm going to start premiering these. I'm probably going to premiere this one, maybe. I don't know if I'll be able to get it out today in time between Dave's streams. So if you're watching this in the premiere, shout out to you. I'll be in there with you. Um, outside of that. I don't think there's really anything else to talk about. A uh, couple of quick shout outs. One to Joshua. Thank you so much for the contribution, brother. I appreciate it, man. Um, one to Owen also. And Owen, he didn't leave his YouTube username, so I'm not sure who he is. So if you want to say something down in the comments, Owen, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Uh, Sasha, huge shout out for the thumbnail. Again, I love this one. Uh, it's beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, brother. Um, shout out to Dave's tax guy, because I told him I would shout him out in the next video. Uh, Dave's tax guy, if you're down in the comments, let me know. Everybody give a shout out to Dave ta Dave's tax guy for doing his taxes and fucking them up all the time. Uh, we got three participants in the series or in the video today. Uh, number one, we're going to do a part two on ugh, Lysifer Soul, this fucking guy. So I got some interesting things to say about him. Part two is a gentleman by the name of Dark Viking. And before you get your hopes up, it's not Vidar, and we are going to cover Vidar at some point here, coming up pretty soon. Uh, but this is Dark Viking. Uh, I believe Vidar was Dark Radovan Viking, but this guy was Dark Viking. They were in there at the same time. Some pretty interesting messages to go over with this guy. And I have a surprise for you all in part three. We are going to be covering a gentleman by the name of Atlas Telamon, and... Again, it's a fucking surprise. I don't know how how right I am on everything, but you'll see when we get to it. And I I uncovered some shit, but again, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, any more shout outs? Any more things I got to talk about? Again, monetization. So big ups on that. Thank you for the thousand subs. Uh, let's go ahead and get on into this, man. Let's go. All right. And we start with uh, Vomit in the human form. This is what this guy is. So he cheers 200 bits. Leisure Suit Larry Wet Dreams Stay Dry is on PS4. It's about a young man finding himself with online dating. Now when I heard this one, it kind of fucking creeped me out a little bit. Dave's reaction was, what the fuck are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. Thanks for the cheer. Don't talk to me like that anymore. So I laughed. I actually got curious, so I googled Leisure Suit Larry, and sure enough, a game fucking popped up. It's called Leisure Suit Larry Wet Dreams Don't Dry. It's about a guy who's trying to find himself through dating. The guy was, Lysifer Soul was ch accurate with the cheer, but you know he had disgusting intentions behind this, and again, it just, it creeped me out. You know what he's thinking, this little sick fuck. Ugh, I hate you, I suffer so <laughs> I fucking hate you. Next picture. Alright, we got a 510 bitch here. Oh my god. Congrats on being the number one on Forbes' most sexiest man alive under 40. <laughs> I've had enough of you, I suffer so And you know what? When I was doing the research, I this popped into my head, this thought. So, I imagine myself like a garbage man driving around picking up people's garbage every week and I come to Lysa for Soul's house to pick up his garbage and I get the little claw around the fucking can and I start to pick it up and he pops out of the fucking garbage can and he scares the shit out of me and at first I'm like kind of shook but I'm like okay this guy's got issues he's not right in the head just laugh it off and say all right you got me man so then I come back the next week and I pick up his garbage and he pops out of the fucking garbage again and you know, it's not funny, but I'm like, okay, he's got issues. Just kind of don't worry about it. 
I come by the next week to pick up his garbage for the third time. I know he's in the fucking garbage can because that's where he is. That's where he lives. And I pick it up and he pops out and I fucking snap, right? And the only thing that stops me from attacking him is I'm going to lose my job and I'm probably going to get arrested. So I just look at him and tell him, don't fucking do it again. And now today is the fourth week and I'm coming around and I'm a few houses down from picking up his garbage and I know he's in there. I know he is because that's what he does. And I, I'm getting closer and I'm dreading it because I know what's about to happen. And so I go to pick up the garbage can and he pops out again, butt ass naked probably. And I jump out of the truck and chase him down and I use a shovel on him. Let's just put it that way. I've had enough of you, Lysa for soul. I've had enough of you, buddy. I can imagine what Dave felt like getting all these messages from you. You, you are a piece of shit, dude. You're a piece of shit and I've had enough of you. I don't think we're going to cover you anymore because I've had enough dumpster diving for to last me a lifetime so kiss my ass fuck you Liza for soul next one's a clip let's go i've been for the channel support Liza for soul did 100 bit cheer he says i'm your biggest fan but then he immediately trumped that with 150 bit cheer and said wow you're the grand champion i saw your fight against the gray prince you're the best can i follow you around i won't get in the way i have no idea what the fuck that means but thanks for the cheer pragmatic all right so we got i'm your biggest fan and by the way if you remember the first time i covered him I'm your biggest fan. This is like the 10th time I've seen this fucking message of I'm your biggest fan. Dave blows him off. But then he sends another cheer behind it and tells him some shit and says, can I follow you around? I won't get in the way. It's funny, but it's pathetic, dude. This guy is so pathetic. Can I follow you around? I won't get in the way. What do you even say? He's like a puppy, but he's... Not a puppy. He's like a human garbage can. I don't understand. This guy's fucking pathetic. Next one's a picture. Let's go. All right. And even more of a fucking creeper. 510 bitch here. Anyone want to come with me and rescue a hippie from San Diego? I don't think he has anybody in his ba or in his mom's basement because he doesn't live by himself. You know that. I don't think he has anybody in his basement or in his garbage can, so to speak, but it's only a fucking matter of time with this fucking guy. I don't know how old he is. He's probably in his mid-twenties still acting like this, but I don't think he has anyone down there yet, but it's only a matter of time till we see this guy on the fucking news and like 10 people are freed from his basement. Ugh. <laughs> Anyways, next one's a clip. Let's go. This piece is barely cooked because it must have been on the edge of the pan. So that's going to go right there oh in the middle. Oh my god, dude. <coughs> I'm actually going to migrate these over here. Lisberg Chudy said, I was much younger, so but when you were like show. 27 to 28, I was, but it was 10 years ago. But you got to realize, turning that off. what you got to realize is my life has been a weird life. Like, I lived with my parents until college. Then at college, I moved out for like a semester. Then I moved back in with my parents who cooked with me for a long time, cooked for me for a long time. Then I had an apartment for like a year <clears throat> that basically I didn't, again, I didn't really cook. My roommates kind of cooked a lot. Then I moved back with my parents again. And then finally I bought this condo and moved into this condo. And this is when I really started cooking for the first time. So I didn't know shit. Like this series, this video series was literally just to put content on a vlogging channel i didn't know what the fuck i was doing this was t who the fuck would watch this video and think that this is a good idea that this is what, how you do it this is so bad man <laughs> this is so bad but i mean in 10 years a lot changes in 10 years you learn a ton i would never make stuff like this any anymore right now i turned it off oh you can leave that pan on the stove <laughs> all right and to be fair i'm not even sure that that was lisa for soul that cheered that it came up under pig pig go and so I just included it anyways, but it, I couldn't understand the name he said, so I just included it anyways. But this fucking guy, man, he, he can't accept responsibility for anything. Everything has to come with a fucking excuse. He's 27 or 28 years old and doesn't know how to fucking make anything on the stove. He, he doesn't know how to cook anything, doesn't know how to make anything. And his excuse for it, it he's not, he doesn't just come out and say, I was an immature little shit and I didn't learn how to do anything or fend for myself is, well, I, I've had a weird life. I lived with my parents, and then I went to college, and then I moved back in with my parents, 
and then I lived with some roommates and they cooked for me. Then I moved back in with my parents. His parents are still making all his meals. They're like 26. You know, if you live with your parents now and you're in your mid 20s, even early 30s, I can understand because the economy's fucked up and it's hard to do things nowadays. I can understand it. But please don't have your parents making all your meals for you and still babysitting you. Fucking guy didn't know how to do his laundry until his like 30s, his early 30s. What the fuck? And then he has to make excuses for everything. No, you don't have a weird life, Dave. You're just a lazy, immature piece of shit. And your content today still shows that. And you're in, you're almost 40. Fuck, this guy's pathetic, man. Anyways, picture is a uh, 200. Next picture, 250 bitch here. <laughs> Win the next back in the day segment. We want you to blab about Street Fighter for hours on end. I like this one. It made me laugh. License for Souls is a dumb bitch, but this made me laugh anyways. When's the next back in the day segment? We want to we want you to blab about Street Fighter for hours on end. I love that one. And by the way, there's a warning to you all. If you are wearing headphones or if you have the volume maxed out, lower it down. I'm going to include a clip that I heard, and since I heard it and had to listen to it, you have to hear it too. I'm going to punish you right now. You, I'm punishing you for your own good. It's because I care about you and I love you all that I have to punish you and do this to you. Again, you were warned. If you have headphones on, if the volume's maxed, lower it down to about halfway. If you have a weak stomach, probably skip ahead 20, 30 seconds. I'm punishing you. And you deserve it for what you put me through. Now I punish you. Here we go. Sometime this week. Okay. So. Excuse me. Um. So. What are we going to do this week? <laughs> I only did that for your own good. So you can learn a lesson. I don't know what that lesson was. But you had to learn your lesson for the day. So. What do you even say, man? What do you even say? He does that in front of a microphone, in front of people. Can you imagine what Ket has to put up with? Seriously, can you fucking imagine what that poor girl has to put up with, with this fucking guy? He's so disgusting. Oh my God, 40 years old and still doing that. Oh, anyways, next picture. Hey, take your punishment, by the way. Next picture, 510 bitch here. Are you afraid now that Kenny Omega, after every major company title, he might be coming after your world champion Twitch streamer championship? <laughs> oh, Lysifer, so I hate you, but this is funny too. And Dave just blows it off. He's not, I'm not a Twitch world champion streamer. Don't talk to me like that. Thanks for the cheer. Move on, but... Kenny Omega is coming after Dave's, and by the way, Dave ain't the Twitch champion anymore. He got defeated and got fired and all that bullshit, and he's going to come back to Twitch one day. Probably soon, he's going to crawl back to Twitch with his tail tucked between his legs, but this one made me laugh, and go back and try to get your Twitch world championship, Dave. I think Amaranth has it, maybe Pokemon, Pokemane, whatever the fuck you call her. Dave got it, and you got your work cut out for you, but go get your title back, Dave. Next one's a clip. Let's go. Yeah. So we'll see. Uh, okay, it looks like Steven tried to verify his account. Steven, you do realize your, your PayPal account has your full name in it, which is not a good idea. Because he says, oh, I, you know, I tried to verify my account, but I didn't appreciate the full name drop. Steven, you're not, you really shouldn't put your whole name in there. Like, I'll give you an example. Right now, I'm taking a look at a PayPal account, and... It's, it's, it's not everyone's full names. Um, and in fact, for example, Missouri Lover. Missouri Lover, he has his real information tied to his PayPal account. He absolutely does. But I don't read that out because his tip comes through as Missouri Lover. Because I guess you can change your name when you tip. So that's what you should do. If you don't want your real name right out on stream, don't tip me via, you know, the default information. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, obviously, I didn't intend that. But that's what your account said when the tip came through. You know, this is all this is all learning experience, right? We're all trying to figure out how, how this shit works. You know, I only, I only streamed for three years, no problems, and then because of mass fraud, um, had to put up with stupid shit. But what are you gonna do, right? Um, 
All right. Well, anyway, Stephen, I will say thank you for the five dollar tip. I appreciate that. I will count it now. Thank you very much. And again, apologies, but you got you're gonna want to when you tip. You can change the name that show up shows up when you tip. So you want to change that, okay? Uh, Lies for Soul Cheers. Have you ever sang that song Down by the Bay? Have you ever seen a duck driving a truck? I don't know what the hell you're talking about. So the answer is no. But thank you, Lies for Soul, for 100 bit cheer. No idea what you're talking about. All right, and this is a small taste of what I have to go through to find these fucking clips and screenshots. And this is a small fucking taste. So Lies for Soul's cheer came up at the end, and it wasn't even fucking relevant. But I, I had to scroll back and I heard all that. By the way, that was from January of this year. So before we even start, again, he can't take responsibility. It's because of massive fraud and it's the viewer's fault that his name is on his PayPal. What other fucking name is supposed to be there? You stupid idiot. And by the way, did you and rewind it if you need to? He said Mazor Lover has all of his real information tied to his account. Dave, I thought you couldn't see that information. I thought you could only see a name and whether it was verified or not. You lying sack of shit. He called the, whoever this guy was, Steven, called out his full name. How fucking dumb can you be, man? Just say his first name. You fucking idiot. Don't say his last, it's not hard, man. This isn't rocket science. Well, I streamed for three years and then, uh, this is a learning experience. And, and no, you you know it's not. Fucking dumb are you, man? And there's the lies again. I can't see your information. Ms. Orlover has all his real information tied, but he I, I just use Ms. Orlover. Again, January of this year. Go back to whatever it was, May, April, when all that major riot shit happened and he can't see your information and it doesn't dox you, blah, blah, blah. Another fucking clip just showing that he's a fucking liar. Now this shocks me. Next picture. All right, and this one and the next clip are going to be the last two for Lies of Her Soul, but... So, <laughs> Phil gets a 500 bitch here from Detractor Arthur that says, no mobile games. And Phil has to say, what the fuck are you talking about? Detractor Arthur, don't test me right now. I don't want to put up with your shit right now. And as you can probably figure, Detractor Arthur is Lysifer Soul. And I'm not going to spoil the last clip for you, but let's go ahead and hear what Detractor Arthur has to say. And let's see what Phil's response is. And keep in mind the last clip that we just heard about real information and what Phil can see and listen to what Phil says. Let's go. Weak. Is this true? Lights for Soul again? Detractor Arthur? He Now he did a 2,000 bit cheer and he says, was it a chargeback troll? Well, I don't know, shithead. If that was you who charged me back, you're going to get into a lot of fucking trouble. Let me tell you something. I'm going to have people at your house repossessing your goods. <laughs> You don't fuck with me. Be, be. Great fucking joke there, Phil. Great fucking joke. So somebody charged him back earlier in the day. Well, Lice for Soul got banned earlier that day. Somebody did chargebacks. He doesn't know whether it's Lice for Soul, which is bullshit. He fucking knows. He can see the name. Detractor Arthur comes in and says, was it a chargeback troll? And you heard Dave's response. Don't fuck with me, shithead. I'm going to have people at your house repossessing your shit. Don't fuck with me. Again, Steven, whatever your fucking name was, Mazor Lover, Lysifer Soul, Major Riot. You're fucking idiots, man. You're fucking idiots. He has your information. He doesn't care about verified. That's not why he does it. He wants real information tied to these accounts. So in case it is a chargeback, he has it. And like I said in one of the other videos, he's too much of a pussy to do anything with that information except hand it off to his little fucking cronies. And you know who I'm talking about. KG, people like KG, Vidar, all these fucking bootlickers like Swaggins and Gokin and all these other little punk bitches, man. I'm gonna send people to your house to repossess your shit. And then he laughs, because it's a joke. Fucking hilarious, Dave. Fucking hilarious. That's how we end with Lysifer Soul. Let's move on to Dark Viking. Alright, so Dark Viking is a very long time fan. Not like Vidar, not Dark Radovan Viking, but he's a long time fan. We start with a $150 tip. 
hope this helps out from all those shit chargebacks you got. It's really fucked up how people can be so low. Lots of love and support. You mean the chargebacks like Detractor Arthur slash Slice of Soul, you fucking idiot? And that 150 probably lasted him about uh, maybe an hour and a half from WWE champions. How people can be this dumb, I don't know, but he's one of them, and you'll get a kick out of the next few messages. Next message. So he resubscribes. Hey, Phil, here with the four months. By the way, sorry I can't cheer or tip that much anymore, but the reason is that my financial standings aren't that great. Don't worry, though. I'm still here. The fuck does that say? Watching, but I just can't support as much. So one day he's giving him a $150 tip. Another day he's telling them he can't support. And by the way, look at that fucking picture of Phil. What the? Who did this? Who put this up? Look at that picture. Jesus, that's awful. But yeah, financial standings aren't great. Maybe you shouldn't be giving him $150. I can guarantee you these guys are getting paid and taking a portion of their check to fucking prop Phil up and support him, man. And you know they need this money, because if they didn't, they wouldn't send messages like this. fuck's wrong with you, man? Stupid idiot. Next one's a clip. Let's go. Shout out to Dark Viking, who did a $2 tip, and he says, I know it's not much, but better something than nothing. I hate to see you having any kind, kind of problems. Of I'm sure you will make it pregnant. Well, thank you home while for Dark Viking for the cars. tips. Appreciate it. Yeah. Again, with the bullshit. A $2 tip. I know it's not much, but it's something. I hate to see you like this. Hope things turn out better for you. This was December of 2017, if I'm not mistaken. Just a couple of days ago, we're doing marathons and fundraiser because he's so broke he can't pay his bills, despite making probably $10,000 a month on average. I can't tell which one's worse, the how stupid these people are or how pathetic Phil is for acting like this, man. Two dollars, you just saw, I can't donate much because uh, my financial standings aren't great right now. Here's two dollars, and Phil is just saying the same old shit. Change the record, Phil. Have you, have you ever heard the term change the record? Change the fucking record, Phil. I'd like for once in your life for you to come out and say, man, I'm doing great this month. Just once. And you know it has to be true because look how much money he's making. One time, Phil, one month in your life, man. Don't be 27 or 28 and not being able to cook for yourself. Don't be 32 or 33 and not doing your own laundry. Come out once for a month and say, I'm doing great financially. I don't need as much help, guys. Thank you. But you can't fucking do it. And that proves to me you're the biggest scammer and con artist that I've ever seen in my fucking life, buddy. You lie. You essentially steal from these people who can't even fucking support themselves. Who tell you. Their financial standings aren't great, and you take the money anyways, because that's the type of piece of shit that you are, and that's why I make these videos. That's why I will continue to make them. And yeah, I know, you know, I put myself in, not risk here, but yeah, some of these people want to come after me, blah, blah, blah. I don't give a fuck, man. I don't give a flying fuck, Holmes. You deserve for people to continue making videos like this. And if I ever stop, I hope somebody else takes the mantle from me. Because you deserve this shit, man. You take advantage of these people. Fucking idiot. Next one's a clip. Let's go. Shout out to Dark Viking, who subscribed to the channel. Thank you, Dark Viking, for, for coming a sub. Um, I am very confused. Dark Viking did a 30-bit cheer. And he says, second surprise, and third surprise is in your mail in a couple of minutes. I don't exactly ex understand what he's saying. Um, I don't know. Oh, wait. Oh. Okay, he sent me an email. He says he actually purchased me. Duke Nukem 3D, the 20th anniversary edition. Wow. It's a Steam game, or he says you can either play it in your downtime if you want, or you can give it away to a fan. Well, I'm going to save this for later, and I guess I'll have to decide during downtime if I ever want to play that or not. 
Yeah, that was the remastered edition. Didn't it come out last year? I think. But it came out during the hardcore gaming season. It was like, when the hell am I going to play this? You know? <clears throat> How am I going to be able to play this when I'm in the middle of a million new releases? So. Anyway. Um, thank you, Dark Viking. Appreciate that. Uh, Game Master. Alright, and I love this clip for a number of reasons. This guy's so dumb. Hey, Phil, uh, here's a tip. And uh, there's something coming for you in the mail, buddy. And Phil's paranoia and just anxiety kicks in immediately. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, a few seconds go by, then he realizes it's an email and the guy gifted him doom something, whatever, fucking whatever. But I love that. Phil, maybe he should have sent people to your house to repossess your shit. Remember that? You fucking idiot. You want to do that shit to other people. You want to play jokes with other people. But when they... And this guy wasn't playing a joke. He's just so dumb. He didn't know how to say it. And English probably isn't his first language. But whatever. People do it to you and you don't think it's funny. You fucking moron. And then the other part. Phil, this is for you. You can either have it or you can gift it to a fan. And what does this motherfucker do? This greedy fuck that has probably thousands of games at this point. Probably a thousand. Between all the fucking games he owns. Does he gift it to a fan? Now, I'm going to save this and play it for later. Thanks. Maybe offline. He doesn't play all games offline. He's already admitted to this. Can't even gift it to a Somebody gives you something, does something nice for you. You're supposed to return the favor, dude. You're supposed to pay it forward. This is why our community is ten times better than his community. And yeah, it's us versus them to an extent. Or at least it makes it sound like that. But everybody in this community tries to help one another, man. Sunspot helped me. You know, I try to help other people. By the way, I was in a GTG's live channel the other day. Go subscribe to him if you didn't already and hit the bell. Because his fucking stream yesterday was great. If you catch, and yes, by yesterday, I mean, uh, what, Wednesday? If you go catch Wednesday's uh, stream, I timestamped in his comment section the roast that he did on DSP. Go listen to it. It's five minutes. It's fucking wonderful god bless you gtg it's good to have you back buddy but we try to help each other over here we don't do that shit somebody sends you something and you don't pay it forward fucking garbage man here we go again i'm the garbage man coming to collect the fucking garbage well here i am buddy pop out like lisa for soul fucking idiot next picture all right and here's the tale of dark viking the next few are going to be the actual tale of him so he subscribes here with the eight-month sub. Keep up the good work, Phil. Still enjoying your content. By the way, I'm feeling better again. I kind of got out of the depression. So that's a good message. That's a good story. It's a good message. Congrats on getting out of the depression, Dark Viking. Uh, it's got some good news in the next picture. Let's go ahead and take a look at it now. So he resubscribes the next month. Alrighty. If nine months isn't great yet, just got myself a new girlfriend now too. Everybody give it up for Dark Viking. Congratulations, buddy. A new girlfriend, you're not feeling depressed anymore. That's a good fucking job, man. That's a good message, and we like that kind of... That's a good... Today's a good news kind of day, Dark Viking. Next one's a clip. Let's go. Game Master. And then we've got Dark Viking 159 who resubbed for the 10th month in a row, and he says, Hey, Phil, I know I haven't been around lately, but I'm just spending so much time with my girlfriend. I barely have time for streams anymore, but hey, here's my 10th month resub. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much, Dark Viking, and let me tell you, if it... Indeed, it is spending time with your girlfriend is the reason why we haven't seen you on the streams. That is indeed a very good reason to not be watching the stream. So, have fun, but be safe. You know what I mean. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So, he's not enjoy or not attending the streams because he's spending so much time with his girlfriend. And Phil's message is, have fun, but be safe. You know what I mean. Well, you ain't got nothing to worry about, Phil, because I'm the... Chances on the slim fucking chance that this is even a real woman. It's a Chris Chan girlfriend again. We all know what that fucking means. But you ain't got nothing to worry about there, buddy. He, he's going to be safe. Trust me on that one. Let's go ahead and go to the next picture. And we got some bad news today for Dark Viking. Oh, no. Again, he resubscribes. Hey, Phil. How are you? I hate to say this, but it's over between me and my girlfriend. And to be honest... I don't really know what to do. What would you advise me to do to move on? And uh, it's a, now it's a bad news day for Dark Viking. So we're all sad now. Everybody's sad in the chat. 
Uh, this is guy is the wrong guy to ask advice though, because he's gonna tell you to take your or, uh, let your girlfriend have some kind of medical emergency, and then he's gonna bitch and complain, and then put it all over the internet, and then he's gonna either break up with her or she broke up with him, and then he's gonna hide some new whore on the side, and even though she's in a relationship, he's gonna talk to her and make her feel guilty that she needs to come take care of him, and he's gonna fly her in multiple times and lie about it and beg for money to get it to make it happen. And he's going to move her in and try to keep everything a secret. So you don't want to ask this guy for relationship advice. Trust me on that, buddy. But poor Dark Viking. Today's a bad news kind of day now. And we don't like that. So we're all sad in the chat. Let's see what the next picture says. Another resubscription. Yo, Phil. Here with the resub. I wanted to let you know I found a new love. And this time from America. I'm from the EU. I wanted to thank you so much for supporting me and giving tips on this situation Thanks to you, I found a new love. Now, maybe it will, well, probably not Panda, but how much you want to bet this guy's fucking just throwing money at Pokimane and Amaranth and claiming that they're girlfriends now? This fucking guy goes through more girlfriends than I do. What the fuck's happening here? Chris Chan part two, man. A new girlfriend, now she's in America. And, uh, again, I wonder if these are real women and if they know they're in a relationship, apparently, but... Again, just more good news for Dark Viking. Now it's a good news kind of day. This guy goes through more women than I do. I, I don't know what the fuck to say on this guy. But yeah, it's a good news kind of day. And the next one's a clip. And this will be the last one for Dark Viking. Let's fucking go. And shout out to Dark Viking 159 who did a 30-bit cheer. He says, Phil, I love your, your vids and streams. I saw what happened, oh, he's talking about what happened the other day when I was playing Friday the 13th and some moron fucking just started saying stupid shit. I don't care. I don't care. He's dumb, all they do is these dumb kids make themselves look so bad. I mean, did you hear the fucking kid? Kid had a higher pitched voice than me, trying to insult me, saying the same stupid shit, bringing up shit that's over a year ago, it's incorrect. <laughs> the same nonsense, the same parroting sheepish bullshit, just proving that he has a fucking walnut in place of a brain. Someone who'll never be a productive member of society, and, uh, you know, it is what it is. Nobody cares. <clears throat> yes, Phil. That kid will never be a productive member of society. Just like you. Bankrupt, don't pay your fucking taxes, beg for a living, in your pajamas all day, can't go outside. No friends, no family around you, one person to essentially take care of you and cook your meals, do your laundry, drive you around. That kid won't be a productive member of society. Just like you, buddy. And by the way, since they were a little dumb kid, how come you didn't threaten to bitch slap them around? And how come you didn't wait till you were in another room to talk shit where they couldn't hear you and threaten them? Because that seems to be your MO, buddy. You like to do that and you're pretty damn good at it from what I hear. Fucking idiot. I I should have included the fucking clip. Now, just to hear what that kid was saying, I'm sure it was fucking hilarious. And I, again, that kid, this was a couple of years ago, a couple more years, they're probably going to be more productive than you've ever been in your entire life, Phil. So, fuck you, buddy. Let's move on to Atlas Telemon and, uh-oh, let's go. All right, so Atlas Telemon... This is the story of the gifted Xbox One X. Now, as I said in the intro, I'm not how sure how I'm not sure of how right I am on this, but again, I'm gonna let you connect the pieces, and if somebody wants to pick up the research from here, feel free. But even if this guy didn't donate the Xbox One X or whatever the fuck it's called, there's a whole bunch of other shady shit going on, and I've already cracked some of it, so let's get into it. Since 50 bits, you've said before that people are surprised how tall you are when they see you in real life. How tall are you? And you would be a beast if you start working out. Now, no, he wouldn't. And this is where the infamous 5 foot 12 uh, clip comes from. He does say 5'11", then he says, well, I'm actually uh, closer to 5'12", but uh, yeah, people are surprised and blah, blah, blah. And then he says how he used to be a body, or not a bodybuilder, but how he used to work out and he was pretty buff. This guy can't do 25 push-ups. He like, oh my god, he lied about it. He honestly, I believe he did get down on the floor on his hands and knees like the beggar that he is. But I believe he was doing uh, 
push-ups off of his knees and shit, you know? So I believe he did try and he did do them that way. But again, I'm glad that guy didn't fucking pay you because you don't deserve it for the piece of shit that you are. But 5'12", fucking buff bodybuilder, stupid and lying. I mean, how much worse can he get? Next picture. So Atlas Telemon does a 95 bitch here. I've been with you for 10 years. If anyone loves you, it's me. Now, how do you even take a message like that? If anyone loves you, pause, it's me. You've been with them for 10, you're not in a fucking relationship with him, you stupid idiot. You're a fan of his. I've been with you for 10 years. If anyone, you're gonna fucking see. This is an obsession. This is an obsession, and again, I've cracked something at the end of it that you'll, trust me, you'll enjoy, but this guy's a fucking idiot. Next picture. 50 bitch here. Trolls whisper me to not give you bits. They don't know I'm a 10-year legacy viewer. Take my bits. So trolls apparently are whispering him, blah, blah, blah. They don't know I'm a 10-year legacy. Well, how do they not know? You seem to throw it in everybody's face all the fucking time. That you're a 10-year legacy viewer. Keep that in mind, by the way. Take my bits. So 50 bits ain't gonna fucking help him. Add about four zeros to that, and then he might fucking, he might be thankful and grateful then. Next one's a clip. Let's go. Okay, continue on. Ladies Man Cheer, he says, I think the DMCA claim and DDoS attack has a silver lining. It showed everyone that you cannot be canceled and showed you the amount of true fans. Right, if anything. You know, I'll be honest. Back in the day, when that kind of stuff happened, I got very nervous. I was like, oh my god, am I going to get kicked off of YouTube with these false DMCA claims? This is the end of everything. For me, was it, a, was it annoying? Did it delay me from having fun streams with you guys? Yes. Did it really wreck me? No. You guys rallied. You supported me regardless. And... If anything, the vest streak continued, which is crazy. I wasn't even playing games, and the vest streak continued, which shows the amount of support you give me regardless of what's going on. And it showed that I have options. I don't... If, if God forbid, something happens hor horrifically here, and I can't stream on Twitch, there's other things I can do and other places I can go. It's not like when I was on YouTube, and if I get kicked off YouTube, oh my God, that was my whole livelihood. There's nothing else to do. It's not like that at all. At all. So... The, you're right, I kind of agree with you, Atlas Telemon. Even though this last weekend put me back significantly with my game playthroughs and releases, it showed a, a layer of positivity there that I'm not going nowhere. It doesn't matter how many people mess with me, screw with me, or try to, to you know, basically ruin my life. It doesn't matter. I'm going to persevere through it. That's the whole point, right? <clears throat> All right, so ladies, man, cheers. And Phil rambles on so much and spews so much bullshit out of his mouth that almost... Towards the end of it, he's like, yeah, I agree with you, Atlas Telemon. Not even the right fucking person. Go back and watch the clip if you need to. Just digging in his fucking ears, rubbing his eyes. How filthy is this fucking guy, man? And then to lie, all that shit. By the way, I I'm not really worried. It's not the end of the world. Blah, blah, blah. When I get these false DMCAs and all this shit happens, like I know I can go somewhere else. And here he is fucking holding marathons and fundraisers for himself, acting like it's the end of the world, acting like he has no other options, saying he can't pay his bills if people don't hit the goal. He never hits the fucking goal, and it's not a fucking the end of the world. What do you know? Fucking liar, man. I titled this one Feigning Distress, because that's all he fucking does. You listen to these clips. He says one thing. He acts like Chicken Little. He's crying wolf. And then fucking a day later, a week later, a month later, it never happened. Don't worry about it. He's not going to worry about it. Fuck you, man. Sack of shit. Next picture. All right. 95 bitch here. And this starts to be the ballad of Atlas Telemon. It's starting to happen now. We're going to get into it as we go along. But he says, damn, that was an ass kicking. Thanks for playing, Phil. So this guy's one of those guys that gets online and plays against Phil and Street Fighter. Is it still happening now under a different name? Probably. He's running from Jose and Goji Tanks, but he doesn't care because he's got people like Atlas Telemon and others that will just line up against him and get their ass beat and try to make him look good. I'm starting to crack something here, but just keep that in mind. Atlas Telemon loves to play him in Street Fighter and get online. Probably doesn't do it under his own name anymore, but we got something going. Next picture. 250 bitch here. Dude, just want to express my deepest respect for your work the last 10 years and your composure during all your trials. Keep rocking. What trials? 
Is he on trial for feigning distress like he should be? You fucking idiot. All your work the last 10 Work. You mean rolling out of bed, literally turning the camera on exactly how he looks, just rolling out of bed, and then just that clip I played earlier of him just doing whatever he did into the mic and just so nasty and so disgusting. 10 years of work. Just spamming people's YouTube with just nonsense videos. Barely puts a title on them. Just puts the date on there and what part it is. And This guy's so fucking lazy, man. During all your trials. Like what? What, false DMCAs? He can't fucking pay his bills? Fundraisers? Those trials? Fuck you, man. Next one's a clip. Let's go. Today. Parasolo just did a super chat. So big ups to whoever sent you that Xbox Series X. That's a true MVP. I agree. And again, here's the thing, guys. I want you to understand something. I know, I very well know, that I have a long-standing fan base of viewers who check out my stuff, but I, I've always called them the vocal minority. What do I mean by that? Excuse me. That's not what I call them. I call them the silent majority. I said the actual opposite of what I call them. I call them the silent majority, all right? Allow me to explain what I mean by that, okay? I've been around since 2008, okay? There's some people who've been around watching my content since the days when I had a camera pointed at a TV in a, in a dark, cave-like room, echoing sound, terrible visuals. There's people who jumped on when I started doing direct capture. There's people who jumped on during the middle when I started doing live streaming and putting face cam up. There's people who've been with me over so many different iterations and evolutions of my content over the last 13 years, okay? The silent majority are those people who keep me afloat, but don't necessarily speak out or talk or become a vocal part of the community. And what I mean by that is there's people out there who love what I do and they will support me when they can, however they can, but you don't know who they are, you know? I have a worldwide viewer base. I have people from all walks of life, all places throughout the globe who come and check out my content. Is it an insanely large millions of people? No, it's a few thousand, but I appreciate those few thousand who've stuck with me over the years and want to see me continue to be able to put out this kind of content regardless of every single sh uh, hardship that I run against, every single stream, right? Because I do. Every, every day, there's some new hardship, there's some new baloney that I gotta go up against and you guys, help me through it okay i fully believe that someone like this donating this console this is someone who probably behind the scenes loves my stuff isn't a vocal supporter isn't someone who anyone would recognize but says i want to help out phil right now because i want to see him do that game pass stuff he's talking about and there you go all right and here we go so atlas telemon was mentioned nowhere in that clip but i got that for a fucking reason some of the key things to remember First, he calls them the vocal minority. Then he says, oh, he fucked it up. It's actually the silent majority. Now, remember the silent majority. Remember that. And also remember previously, Atlas Telemann said he's a 10-year legacy viewer. And that was two or three years ago. So at this point, he's a 13-year legacy viewer. Phil says, you don't know who these people are. Remember that. And he says they're in the thousands. Well, we can disprove that right fucking now, Phil. If you really had a viewer base that were so loyal for 13 years that are in the thousands, then why do you beg for money every fucking day the way that you do? It's probably 10 people. You do have a silent majority, Phil. I can admit to that. But it's you can count them on both hands. And I already know half of them. By doing this fucking research, by looking into all this shit, I have already know half of them. One of them was in that fucking clip. His name was Bar Gary BTK. Gary BBC, and apparently dude's been doxxed on Kiwi Farms already. I'm going to stay away from it because I don't know how accurate it is or, you know, maybe there's some more that needs to come out about him. Gary BTK is a silent majority and he's already been fucking doxxed. That's one of them. Two and three are Silent Bob and One Minute Man, and I'm coming for them too. You can fucking believe that. I'm coming for them. Number four is Atlas fucking Telemon, and I'm going to prove it in the next clip. This is the silent majority. He used to talk a lot. He doesn't do it anymore. I searched Atlas Telemon on Kiwi Farms. I got barely any fucking hits because he doesn't do it in front. He does it behind the scenes, in the shadows, in the dark. Let's go to the next clip. 
Bear Templar did a 100-bit cheer and did a troll cheer that he thought I would not detect is a troll cheer, but it is. So thank you for the 100 bits, and I eat them now because they're delicious. Nom, nom, nom. And Atlas Telemon did a 45-bit cheer and said, Have a great stream today, Phil. The silent majority has your back. Yes, Phil. Eat those bits. Nom, nom, nom. You fucking pig, like with slop in front of you. Disgusting fuck. But then Atlas Telemon cheers and says, We've got your back, Phil. The silent majority has your back. This was from a couple of years ago. Three years, in fact. Where does the silent majority fucking come from, Atlas Telemon? Huh? You bitch. See, this is what I love about Phil. He's so dumb that he just says all this shit and he thinks he's being slick. He thinks people can't figure this stuff out. But he just, it's like, how dumb can you be, man? Pig Pig Go records everything, buddy. Maybe some stuff is hard to find because you've got so much garbage that you spew out on a daily basis. But he thinks he's being slick and he tries to throw it in their faces that you don't know who they are. They're in the thousands. They don't talk. Just like his girlfriend, just like when he said she's undoxable, I'm, you don't know who she is, blah, blah, blah. And then within, what was it, 20 minutes of being on camera, she had been doxxed already. All her information was out there. Phil, you can't throw challenges out like that. Because people are going to take those challenges and they're going to fucking win them. Unlike you, the Twitch streamer championship belt. Now, I'm not, I have no ill will or no evil intentions to anybody that I cover in any of these series. Part of it is entertainment. I'm never going to dox them. I'm never going to come after them personally. Nothing like that. Because that's not my intention. Part of it is entertainment. Part of it is to show what type of person Phil is and how he abuses these people. But Phil, you can't throw out shit like that, dude. Because it's going to come back to bite you. You just can't, man. So, Atlas Telemon just cheers and says, The Silent Majority has your back, Phil. Why? Well, I wonder who you... I thought we didn't know who the Silent Majority was, buddy. Next one's a clip and it's just going to get deeper. Let's go. Okay. So Atlas Telemon says the following. He says, 2020 owes me some compensation, so here's my wish list. Number one, Phil gets an Evo top three ranking in Super Turbo. <laughs> Number two, John Rambo makes a glorious return. You guys get to an epic couch co-op. And number three, a fan donates you that PlayStation 5. Alright, so this was June of 2020, 13 months ago, almost to the fucking day. And Atlas Telemon cheers and says, I have three wishes on my wish list. Number one is for him to get top three of Evo. Get the fuck out of here. Dad, get the fuck out of here. He probably can't top, crack top 3,000 at Evo at this point. Number two is for John Rambo to nah, get the fuck out of here again. John Rambo has moved on with his life. He's a productive member of society. I don't even know what he does. But I guarantee you, he's a productive member of society, and he's moved on. But number three on Atlas Telemon's fucking wish list for 2020 is for a fan to donate a PS5 to Phil. And here we go 13 months later, and somebody mysteriously donates an Xbox One X to Phil. And Phil talks about the silent majority and who they are. And by the way... If you go back and watch the stream from the Xbox One X, Atlas Telemon did two huge tips, a $50 tip and a $100 tip. And that's what kicked off this whole thing for me and I started fucking going down the rabbit hole and searching. 13 months ago, wish number three is, I wish a fan could donate you a PS5, Phil. 13 months later, a fan donates an Xbox One X that's just been sitting around. And let's go to the next picture because it's going to get even deeper. Again, last year, 100 bitch here. I have a SNES mini new inbox. I never play it. If you like, I can send it to you. I wish a fan could donate you a PS5. I have an SNES mini new inbox that I never use. If you like, I can donate it to you. Somebody sends Phil an Xbox One X who he doesn't want to give credit to. He wants to keep him secret. He talks about the silent majority. This guy's admitted to being the silent majority. He just happened to show up on the day Phil got the Xbox One X and he tipped $150. I'm not saying that this is the guy, the guy on Twitch. I'm watching his Twitch, but 
Start connecting the dots, man. If somebody else wants to take this fucking research, if I had to put a percentage on it, I would say 90% it was this guy. The one thing that threw me off is when Phil was opening it up, or I'm sorry, when he was talking about it, he said that it came through USPS and it was shipped within the United States. He could have been lying. He And, and Atlas Telemont is not within the US. I saw where he was from. I'm not going to fucking say it. I, he gave away his age in one of them. I'm not going to say it. Again, this is not my intention. But if it did come from within the U.S., then it's not Atlas Telemann and I'm wrong. But Phil could have been lying. USPS also works with other carriers. So it's possible it was sent from wherever Atlas is from. And then the USPS picked it up and made the final delivery. It's possible. You know, it's shady that it arrived right in time for Phil's pre-stream, right as he was starting it. It's fucking shady, but... People say he bought it himself. I don't think he did. I honestly don't think he did. It's possible for sure. But if I had to, you know, if you put a gun to my head and made me tell you, guess right now, it's Atlas Telemann for me, buddy. I feel 90% confident in saying that. Maybe it wasn't. And the next one's going to be the final clip for Atlas. And again, even if it's not the Xbox One X, it's so fucking shady. Let's go. Oh, like, okay. Um, Alice Telemann just cheered, he said, bit of a devil's advocate, if you go offline, so if I'm not streaming, and I decide to give you a hundred dollars, is that a taxable tip or a gift from a friend and non-taxable? It is taxable. Every piece of income I get is taxable. I'm an internet personality. The reason that anyone would give me any income out of the blue is because I'm an internet personality. Right now, if I didn't have an established internet presence or persona, if I didn't have a business, if I wasn't a content creator, no one on the street's going to walk up to me and say, here's a hundred dollars. Okay. If someone literally walked up on the street right now and didn't know who I was and said, here's $100, that could be considered a non-taxable gift. But outside of that, anything that comes through because I'm a content creator, because you know who I am, is a taxable. Every piece of income I have received, I have paid taxes on, or at least filed taxes saying I owe taxes on it, and now I have to pay the back taxes I didn't owe, okay? I do it right. I do it right. I don't do things the wrong way. I don't know how other streamers and YouTubers do it. That's how I do it. That's probably why, admittedly, I'm in the tax issue I'm in. Because a lot of other people probably don't record, report their income properly. And I do, which is why I owe the taxes that I owe. And everyone else just says, I don't owe anything. No, I do it right. Because I. the last thing I want is 10 years, 15 years down the road, the federal government says, we don't think that you pay, that you did your taxes right, you know, because we think you have hidden income that you didn't declare. And I'll be like, well, fuck, now I'm screwed. Right? No, no, I can't have that happen. You know, I can't. So I have made sure I've reported all my income. <laughs> so Atlas Telemann, I don't even remember what it was, cheer or tip, whatever. Devil's advocate. If you go offline and immediately, this one tells me they communicated this in the past. He asked him, if you go offline and Phil immediately looks at the camera and says, so if I'm not streaming, he means, how do you, how the fuck would you know that? This guy gets confused over everything. And Atlas says, if you go offline and Phil looks at the camera and says, if I'm not streaming, he means. And he says, if somebody were to give you uh, money offline, does it count as for uh, taxable? Is it taxable? And Phil does his spiel of, no, everything's taxable. Any income I get is taxable because you know me as a personality, as a streamer. If somebody walked up to me on the street and said, here you go, here's $100 as a stranger, that's not taxable, I can accept that. The reason I ended on this clip is because to me, what this says is he names them the silent majority for a fucking reason. He takes their name away from them. They're not even real people, they're just a group of strangers. Offline, if he is getting contributions, He's probably not declaring it on his fucking taxes because these people are just saying, hey, Phil, here's money or hey, hey, stranger, here's money. It's not on camera. It's not during business hours. Here's money from the silent majority. People that don't even have fucking names. One minute man, Silent Bob, Gary BTK, Atlas Telemann. He took the name away from these people and just calls them a group. So he doesn't know who it is. They're strangers, essentially. And this guy's asking him, if you go offline and Phil looks at the camera and says, if I'm not streaming, he means, are the fucking contributions you get taxable? And Phil says, yeah. And then, by the way, 
I do my taxes right, man. I don't know about other people. I do my taxes right. And then he has to correct himself, which is probably why I'm in all the trouble that I'm in. Buddy, if you were doing them right, you wouldn't be in fucking trouble. Phil is the king of projecting. What he likes to talk shit about other people doing, nine times out of ten, he's guilty of it himself. All the mobile game shit that he talks and how companies can do that and how people are stupid for throwing money and thousands away into mobile games. And look at him. What he talks about people taking a nugget of truth and spinning it for views and all this bullshit. And he does the exact same thing. The mobile game is another perfect example. Well, they take a, the fact that I used to say I played mobile games and they spun it out of control. Look at his champion's account, man. That's what he does. Takes a nugget of truth and just spins everything else. Just like the taxes right here. Well, yeah, if, you're a, if, if you give it to me online and you know who I am, but if a stranger came up in the street or if a stranger gave me 100, that's not taxable. That's charity. And then he has a group called the Silent Majority that gives him money behind the scenes, which he claimed it was in the thousands. So there's no telling how much money he's getting off camera. There's no fucking telling, and you know it's happening because he's begging for it more and more nowadays. He's saying, if you watch these clips on YouTube, please send me a tip. I'll give you a shout out in the next video, or if you don't want a shout out, I won't even say your name. How fucking shady is that? And then you have idiots like the silent majority who are offering him and telling him, asking him on fucking stream, is this, is, is this taxable? What about if you get it off stream? And Phil immediately knows what off stream means because he looked at the camera and said it. How shady is this shit? Even if this guy's not the one who sent the Xbox, how shady is this shit, man? Behind the streams and all this garbage, just don't tell me how long this has been going on. I wonder why Phil is in all this tax trouble that he's in, dude. Because he does it right, like he told you. He does it right. He doesn't have these problems. He doesn't know how other people do it, but he does it right. He's the one. He can't accept responsibility for anything, like I started this video with. Everything is somebody else's fault, and watch. When he gets fucked over for these behind-the-scenes tips that he's taking and not paying taxes on, it's going to be somebody else's fault. The silent majority is going to get thrown under the bus just like everybody else. Fuck you, Phil. Fuck you, man. Part 12 will be up next week. Again, I'm going to try to premiere this. So if it is premiere and you're in the chat, what's up to you? I'll be in there with you. Um, quick shout out again to GTG. Go to his live page, live channel page and subscribe. Hit the bell. Um, you know, it's great to have him back. Quick shout out to Peachy. Peachy is always in the fucking comments. And Peachy has my back. And just want to make sure that I say that and recognize that. Uh, you know, I appreciate all the comments and all the support you always show to me. Uh, Meta PH, I'm not sure how he pronounces it. This dude's always in the comments replying to everybody. Shout out to you, homie. Um, shout out to Sasha again for the thumbnail. Joshua and Owen, thank you so much for the contributions. Again, I got monetized. I might try to do some super chats in the premiere if it'll let me. If not, fuck it, maybe next time. Um, I'll shout out anybody who gets a contribution again. Thank you for watching. You know... <sighs> Whatever, dude. Fucking whatever. Oh, and you know what? Before I finish, I don't have the community tab yet. I wanted to put this in a poll in the community tab because it'll be easier for me to see the results. Somebody asked me a question two episodes ago, and I'm not going to say who it was. They can say who they are in the comments if they want to. They asked me if I was ever going to cover Anani and that Anani Mouse and that I shouldn't just look past what he used to do to people and how he used to treat people. I had said before I was never going to cover him because he's woken up and I try not to cover these people and he's, he's in the detractor community now. But this person made a very good point that for longtime fans who got modded and shit talked by Anani, that shit shouldn't be swept under the rug. So if I get the community tab, we'll do an official poll. But down in the comments, let me know if you think I should cover Anani because I can because there's plenty on him and I'm not going to hold back. I'm going to shit talk him and you know, because he was dumb for doing what he did. Coincidentally, he's never commented on any of my videos. It's hard for me to believe that he hasn't heard of them yet because he's in the detractor community. Maybe he hasn't. Maybe he hasn't. But I have a feeling it's for a reason he hasn't commented. Let me know what you think, if we should cover him or not. I can probably do two or three parts on him. If not, then no big deal. He's part of us now. And, you know, we'll move on to somebody else. If so, 
you know, he's part of us and it'll have a happy ending just like I did with Lord Lamb. But, you know, he's still fucked up, man. He fucked up and sometimes he can't sweep it under the rug. Let me know what y'all think. This is going too long already. I will see y'all for part 12 next week. Let's fucking go.